I think that was just a screen caps. Oh yeah. Is it working? Right. So, um, hello everybody. My name is Global Professor from Orlando Ferry from Maritime Stop. And today I am interviewing the fastest Bengali kid typist and the person who is at the top of his class in the Mundi uh, tutorial, um, a great phonetician, Safwan stuff. So now I first wanted to, uh, him to introduce himself. So um, what is your name? Um, how old are you? What school do you go to? And what grade are you? In? Thank you, Professor Barry, for giving me the opportunity. <laughs> I'm Stefan Mustafa, I'm 11 years old and a fifth grader at Dhanmoni Tutorial School. I live in Dhaka, Bangladesh. I'm the only son of my parents and I have an elder sister. My father is a business executive and my mother has devoted her full time to make our family wonderful. And my aim in life is to become a motivational public speaker, particularly targeting the youngsters to help building a beautiful world using their hidden talents. That's all, thank you. Wow, that's honestly so great. So um, first of all, uh, what make, first of all, what makes you different from the 1300 other kids in that Monday tutorial? And second of all, what makes you different from the 18 million other primary school students in all of Bangladesh? Well, there are many talented kids in Bangladesh, and this is a country of opportunities. We just need to bring the right talents in the right places. I have very little achievements till today, and I'm continuously working to achieve more and more. This would not have happened if I wouldn't have got the support from my family. To name a few small achievements that I've obtained so far are as follows. I'm a painter, and I've participated in six art exhibitions, one of which was glass painting. I got awarded in all art exhibitions. And Professor Barry, I have done a painting for you for this special live session. So may I show it to you? Yeah, sure. Okay, so here's the painting. Can you see it? Thank you so much. So great. I love that hand. I can't even draw yeah. a face that well. <laughs> okay, and as I talked about the glass painting, so let me show it to you. So here is, yes, here is the glass painting. You can see? This is the glass painting which I've done. My goodness, you are truly great. In fact, I've also interviewed another artist before. You are honestly one of the best artists I have ever seen. And now I'm even more honored to interview you. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Means a lot to me. Huh? So, um, is there anything you can do other than uh, now? How fast can you type exactly? Because typing was the whole reason I came to interview you here. Yeah. So, uh, Professor Barry, actually, in the second question, that how I'm different from the other kids, I just had to tell some more points that. I'm also a brown belt in martial art and presently having trainings for obtaining the black belt. This helps me to keep physically fit. And interestingly, I've developed a general knowledge video content course with 5,000 amazing general knowledge questions about the world and for all age groups. It is for all the age groups. Youngsters and job seekers can be highly benefited by going through the course. And I'm one of the youngest teachers in Bangladesh, mm -hmm. teaching mental math at Bangladesh Online School. I also have a YouTube channel, namely <laughs> Little Master, where I upload videos on mental math, English pronunciation, Islamic lessons, and computer programming. I have more than 100 public presentations in my YouTube and Facebook channels. I'm a regular podcaster at TESOL Radio, for motivational stories and Islamic lessons. And at last, I'm the fastest kid typist in Bangladesh. I'm only a few words away from becoming the world's fastest kid typist. Please wish me luck on the same. My goodness, you're pretty famous. 
Now, um, I see that you have all of these great achievements. Now, I wanted to ask you a little something. Um, what do you think about Bangladesh's current education system? Well, um, I wouldn't say that the present education system in Bangladesh is bad. It's still not up to the mark either, but it is improving. Pandemic has taught us and also our teachers the new horizons of teaching methodologies. And the main problem here is that there are very few insignificant changes in the education system of Bangladesh for the last 50 years. And believe it or not, the way our great grandfather studied, we are also following the same methods, but the world has changed a lot. Our decision makers need to ask themselves that does this uh, curriculum really help our students to be fit for the coming world and by 2050 it is predicted that there will be 9 billion people I repeat 9 billion people in this planet earth food and pure drinking water will be a scarcity after all we will have to fill up 9 billion dishes three times a day we need to think about that our education system should somehow be able to put the thinking process in our heads, which it currently doesn't. One of the most important drawbacks of our education system is it cannot come out of the traditional systems like traditional courses and traditional grades. All right. So now that's great. But I wanted to ask you what difference done mon uh, in fact, here in the US as well, we also study the same way as our great grandparents do. The current educational system was invented in 1874. So um, now I wanted to ask you, what makes Don Mundi tutorial in particular different from the rest of the schools in Bangladesh? Well, Dhanwandi Tutorial is such a school. Well, it was established in 1972 and it is a very old school and it has lots of experienced teachers, like one for 30, 35 years, even for 40 years. Like I, my class teacher, Lulu Miss, yes, maybe she's watching the live probably with you as your very famous Professor Barry. So I've informed all my school teachers to watch this live and every teacher is, well, they have different kinds of talents and of course, they're very good at teaching as well. That's great. And um, I wanted to ask you, uh, which teacher do you like the most? Okay, so my most favorite teacher is Mohamed Yasser the founder chairman of Tissot Bangladesh Limited. He is smart, dynamic, and one of my idols. I've done many researches with him and he helped me with my, with my English pronunciation and mental math. Together, we have also invented some creative mental mathematics tricks. He's not only a teacher, but also a preacher. Our chemistry is so beautiful, which is very unique in this country. Great. So now, um, are there any favorite subjects you have? Yes, my favorite subjects are mathematics and English, especially English pronunciation, because, you know, I believe that speaking is an art and it is important to have a good accent to communicate with the people globally. If you allow me, I can bring in some examples for our viewers, like I, we can learn something together. Well, if you give me the permission, Professor Barry. Um, if we have the time, then sure. I give you permission to go ahead. Thank you. Thanks a lot. So, you know, we all want to be fluent in our English speaking. So I'm going to tell you such a tip so that you can be even more fluent in your English speaking. So we call this glottal stop. So when we drink water, you know, if we put these three fingers in the middle of our throat, now this organ, you see, this organ is called the glottis. Yes, this is called the glottis organ. And when you try to swallow something, you will uh, see that something is happening in the middle of your throat. And this is what glottal stop is. So question comes, where can we use the glottal stop? 
So if we find any consonant sounds after t, k, and d, then we can use the glossal stop. For example, uh, like, wow, uh, well, he's not, uh, it's not my fault. So you see, it's not my fault. So after not, see, the last sound is t sound. So my fault, ma is a consonant sound. It is also known as a nasal sound. So as we have a consonant sound after t, if we have after uh, consonant sounds after t, k, and d, we can use the glottal stop. Like we can use the watch, uh, stopwatch even uh, that which one is faster. It is not my fault or it's not my fault. Professor Barry, what do you think? Which one was faster? The first one or the second one? Um, the one with the shortening, the second one. It's not my fault. Yeah. It's not my fault. So you see, we can improve our uh, yes speaking ability. More, We can be more fluent. Let's take another example. He is a bad guy or he's a good guy. Both of them are same. So he is a bad guy. Now you see, G is a constant sound and we have bad. So da at last and we have constant sound after that. So now again, let's uh, take a stopwatch timer and let's take how much time you take with the first one. He is a bad guy or second one is a bad guy. So the second was obviously faster, right? It was faster than the first one. Yes. So thank you. That's all about the English pronunciation. All right, great. I love that lesson. And I love how you made it so compact. So um, now I heard that um, you are a uh, great and mental math. So I know you use uh, many methods, um, including that one where you use a method to add 20 consecutive numbers. Uh, so first, can I hear your method? Okay, so method uh, is basically, first of all, uh, well, for example, there are 20 consecutive numbers in the series. One plus two plus three plus four. You will take huge time if you solve like this. One plus two is three. Three plus three is six. Six plus four is ten. So it's going to take a long time to solve it. But what we can do, we can just take the first digit of the series, uh, first number of the series, and the last number of the series. So the first the first number of the series is 1, and the last number of the series is 20. So we need to add that together. So it can be 1 plus 20, which equals to 21. And at last, the last step which you need to do is you need to add a 0 in the units place. So the answer is 2, 1, 0. Hmm. That's a great method. And uh, what we use here at Very Time Slab, it's... Um, in fact, maybe we should go to another question. We'll come back to that later. So first of yeah. all, um, why do you think some kids don't sow their extraordinary side? Why do you think some kids just um, don't do anything great for most of their life? What I understand is most of the children are into syllabus-centric learning, which is not right. Like we cannot go beyond the syllabus. And point two is parents and seniors often leave the kids with a cell phone to engage them with games and unproductive words. This is one of the big obstacles for the success. And most of the children, yes, most of the children do not utilize their time properly. Time management is very important for success. Yes, the one who can manage time is the king and the one who can't is a loser. So... The urge of creating something new or inventing a process are not injected to them by the schools or from the family. Family members push them to do good results only, but they don't tease them to be creative or successful. Scoring high marks in exam doesn't really mean that you're successful. And lastly, what I would love to say is parents' thinking process also play a vital role here. Yes, true. Um, a lot of parents are leaving their kids with phones so they can play games. Um, they can be unproductive. They can uh, they can get themselves addicted and uh, on 
unproductive things. And to be fair, we do need to relax from time to time. But sometimes um, getting too much of it, uh, getting it out of control is uh, one of the worst things. So you can't have too much fun or too much work. And now, um, um, let's, I wanted to ask you, what do you think will happen to the Bangladeshi education system or for, uh, to be fair, the entire education system in the world over the next decade or so? Oh, okay. That's a very good question. Now, first of all, it's very difficult to predict. And the simple answer is IDK. I don't know. But I can assume that the education system after a decade could be completely changed and might be full online-based education to facilitate the distance learning. Technology will take over today's human-based systems. AI, artificial intelligence supported learning will be there. And with artificial intelligence in place, the human works will be less. Big companies will get their job done with the use of AI and robots. So technical education will superset the general education. Also with access to the information highways, uh, that is the high speed internet, the syllabus for any course will not be limited in the available hard copy books in the market. That's what I think will happen after in the education system after a decade. Great. So now I'm not exactly sure about the AI part, but I definitely agree with that um, on, uh, or that virtual part because um, as even as COVID is fading right. away, um, a distance uh, distance learning is making its mark, and so, so we still often every day see people learning via Zoom or Google Meet or Google Classroom or stuff like that instead of actually meeting face to face. So digital learning had definitely taken uh, it had definitely taken a scratch at the education system as a whole, and it's probably going to be the mainstream source of education in the foreseeable future. So now let's get back to that um, adding consecutive numbers thing. Now you talked yes. about adding a uh, number from one to 20. Well, here in the early science lab, we actually use the equation n times n plus one over two. Over now, two. Yes. now n is pretty simple. n is just the greatest number in the sequence or uh, the last number in the sequence. For example, if you were adding 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6 plus 7 plus 8 plus 9 plus 10, yeah. then um, n would be equal to 10. So you could take 10 and replace all uh, places where n is with 10. So you get 10 times 10 plus 1 divided by 2, which is 10 times 11 divided by 2. And 10 times 11 is obviously 110. 110 mm -hmm. and divided by 2 would be 55. Great. All right. So now it looks like um, that's all of the questions I have to offer you. Um, but well, one more thing before uh, you can start asking me questions. Um, the guy who invented this method was actually named Gas. Now, it was a, it's a very weird story how he came to invent it. Um, so legend says that when he was six in the 1800s, um, his teacher uh, had finished all of the activities. The entire classroom had finished all of the activities. So the teacher decided to give them um, a really long activity that they would never finish so that they just didn't walk out of class or something like that. And so she asked them to add all numbers from one to a hundred. And it is said that you know, while the others took hours to even get halfway, Gauss did the whole entire thing within just five minutes by experimenting. And that he found the answer to be 5,050. And indeed, if you go through the laborious process of um, taking that, then you will find that indeed it is 50-50. Yes, that's right. So, um, now you can start asking me questions. Um, 
so great to see okay. you. You're definitely an inspiration for millions of children around the world. I hope that in the foreseeable future, uh, I hope that in the blink of an eye, you will change millions of kids' lives. I know that you uh, want to be a motivational speaker. In fact, you told us that at the beginning. So I hope that you will motivate the seven, uh, the eight billion, and soon to be nine billion kids around the entire world. Yes, now Professor Isaac Barry, you're also a great inspiration for me. I follow your Facebook and YouTube pages every day, and I also admire you very much. And I'm a big fan of yours. Yes, Thanks. me and my family members, everyone is a big fan of yours. Oh, that means so much to me. Yes, and uh, just to remind you, you asked me a question that how fast can you type? Is fast typing important? That right yep so i didn't answer that question so the answer to that question is i just tested my typing speed yesterday and that was 70 words uh, 107 words per minute with 98 percent accuracy not bad actually not not bad so at present the fastest kid type in the world is abhishek giant a 13 year old kid and he posted 109 words per minute I'm very close to do the world record, just three more words per minute I just need. If I can hit 110, I can be the fastest kid typist in the world. Yes, and as far as my knowledge goes, faster typing is very important because, you know, we are moving towards a greener paperless world. The future institutions are predicted to be paperless and hence computer communication will take over. It is taking over actually. Here yeah. comes the importance of fast typing. The faster you can type, the more time you can save for other important works. Wow. Well, that's very true because um, basically electronics have already taken over. Um, the only way we use letters is basically either ceremonial or for very, very important stuff. Like, I don't know, sending a letter to the president. Um, even yeah. for uh, even for somewhat formal things, like communicating with your professor, um, you, we always use emails. And so we don't really use paper anymore. And um, so see, uh, using email, uh, uh, using typing is one of the biggest things. And even if we do use paper, you're usually typing out those letters. So I can, now I can finally see um, the importance of fast typing. And also, um, I'm not really sure what you mean by not bad for 107 words per minute. That's great. I'm 40 words per minute behind that. Yes. And, you know, Professor Isaac Barry, you're great. Well, what's your typing speed, by the way? Um, usually I get around 60 words per minute. The a record oh, I have. Great. Yeah, the record I have is somewhere around 70, so. Okay, that's great. No problem. Like, if you have anything to type, you can just send it to me. I will type it for you. You can just do other important work. <laughs> okay. Thank you. So, shall I start asking you questions? Yeah, sure. Okay. So, first question that, who is your idol? Um, well, I would say that it would be either Sir Isaac Newton or Albert Einstein. They were both great physicists who changed the world of physics and revolutionized physics. Um, Sir Isaac Newton was the person who discovered gravity. Some people even make jokes about him inventing gravity. So yeah. in 1500, everybody was floating in the sky. And um, he discovered gravity. He, um, dis he worked on optics and light. He changed the world of physics as we know it. And Einstein changed it even more by coupling Sir Isaac Newton's view of physics and creating a completely, uh, what is now the base of all of modern physics so th those two are my idols because they completely change physics and i look up to them okay understood now next question comes that how did you get your name isaac like is it from isaac newton inspired from him 
Well, um, yeah, it is. Um, one of my birth name was actually Saborno Patik Berry. Saborno meaning uh, beautiful, Berry meaning gold. And I'm still not sure to this day what Patik means. Um, but yes. when I was two, my um, a friend of my father, who is a professor, Professor Masajur Rahman, he actually he actually asked me, um, he actually asked my father, I just relearned all of calculus from this guy. In fact, he had went to a very prestigious school, but from that school, he didn't understand most of calculus. And he had learned it from some random two-year-old boy on the internet. And so he saw, he likened me to Sir Isaac Newton, who was the inventor of calculus. And he thought, this man is the next, this little boy is the next Sir Isaac Newton. So he asked my father to rename me, um, uh, uh, to change my middle name to Isaac. And um, ever since the age of two, that was my new name. Okay, uh, do you know the meaning of Isaac? Um, well, I believe it comes from Sir Isaac Newton, and I'm not sure what significance it has there, but I'm sure it's um, very common because I've seen like a million British people with that name. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And now comes a funny question that for the weavers, just for entertainment, do you cry when you get sad or angry? Um, well, sometimes when I'm hearing uh, emotional stories or things uh, about hardship, um, I cry a little bit. I get sad, but um, I'm not, I haven't gotten angry. I haven't gotten angry for most of my life. I mean, so that means, so I mean, aside from like terrorist attacks or hearing about um, terrorism or hearing about uh, starving people or hearing about hardship, I mean, this world is not perfect. And sometimes it just saddens me to hear that. And sometimes I even cry about it. But I have almost never gotten angry, so. Very good, very good. And just, uh, this is my idea. And do you have any plan of opening Isaac Barry Foundation like Gates Foundation of Bill Gates? Well, good idea, but I think that I don't want to establish something about philanthropy, but rather something that would educate people about mathematics and science and something that would, well, educate the world about uh, math, science, and how they can be used to uh, change our world, change our technology, and um, how we can stop markers from drying out so I don't get outraged every time I try to pick a new one. Oh, wow. Very good. And my next question to you is that when can I expect you to visit Bangladesh and meet you in person? Well, I'm not sure right now. Um, I don't have any plans right now, but maybe I'll have one in the future. Okay, great. Well, I want to meet you in person. I'm very eager to, yes, I'm waiting eagerly. And do you have any idea that how will the world look like after 20 years from now with AI in place? Well, I'm not sure if even the baby physics of our time, which still is only, well, I don't know. Uh, if you're talking about quantum, uh, if you're talking about special relativity, then um, our, our physics is only about 70 years old. And if we're talking about quantum mechanics, then it's only about, I don't know, maybe um, 50 years old. So our, uh, our physics is approximately the same age as my grandfather. And so our physics is the amount of physics or the foundation of physics that we have today is very young. And so I don't think we can use it to achieve something like consciousness or AI. But if well, some guy, um, if some guy from the future invented a time machine and shoved an AI robot in there, then um, AI would probably change the entire world if it was suddenly spontaneously brought here. Um, it would probably revolutionize tasks, the short tasks, or like laborious tasks, like I don't know, um, um, cleaning or uh, cleaning or checkout or cashiering or organizing, and it would probably change. It would probably um, 
the amount of jobs would probably suddenly plummet because of AI taking up like, I don't know, half our jobs. Oh, wow, very good. And this is a very uh, good answer. And my next question to you is, now this is kind of a general knowledge round. So let me ask you some questions of general knowledge. <laughs> Don't be scared, I'm gonna ask easy questions. <laughs> So my first question to you is, <laughs> so my first question to you is, which animal never dies? Do you have any idea? Uh, the immortal jellyfish, which can turn into a larva after uh, it's um, yeah. completed the thing. Yeah, that's right. Very good. And my next question to you is that which animal immediately dies after drinking water? Um, I don't know, a fire monster? <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, creative, though. So it's kangaroo rat. Kangaroo rat is the right answer. It mm. never drinks water. You know what happens? When they drink water, they immediately die. So they Wait, never why? drink water. Why do they immediately <laughs> die when they drink water? A peculiar reason. <laughs> so let's move on to the next question, and that is... Well, which question shall I ask you? And which is the most expensive fruit in the world? Yeah, uh, I can give you a hint, and that is, it is from Japan. Okay, now I seriously don't know. I thought I had a chance. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is called the Yubari King Melon. You know it's worth? It is almost two million dollars two and a half million dollars for how much like a slice not a slice a whole piece of watermelon <laughs> you king melon that's called you king melon so you you need to be a millionaire to buy a few of these melons uh, i'm not interested in buying this you can buy you can buy it i'm not interested for just a fruit I don't want to spend two and a half million dollars. Me neither. Okay. <laughs> yes. I don't, I don't and, even have that much in my budget. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And my next question to you is, well, which question shall I ask? <laughs> you can uh, ask him. Which is the, okay, uh, I'm giving you easy, seriously now. Which is the only mammal that can fly? This is easy. Oh. <laughs> I don't know why, but it's at the back of my head, but I can't figure it out. No problem. No problem, Professor Barry. It is a bat. It is bat. This oh, is the only mammal. Yeah! Bat. A bat's a mammal. I forgot that. <laughs> so, uh, Professor Isaac Barry, I don't know whether you remember or not, when I was talking about my little achievements, well, I talked that I have developed a general knowledge course with 5,000 amazing questions, what? and I asked the questions from there, okay? So you can be a part of that course. You can actually go through it. It's filled with 5,000 amazing questions. So you can go through it, 5,000 general knowledge questions. I know you have lots of knowledge, but it will help you to gain knowledge even more. Yes. <laughs> Uh, could you send a link um, after this interview? Yes, yeah, sure. I would. I would be glad to send you the link. Well, it's not launched yet. We are gonna launch it. Maybe, yes, maybe between March or something. Then you can see the course. All right, sure. Now, in fact, there are over three hundred people viewing you, so you should be excited. I hope a few of those are your <laughs> teachers. So, <laughs> yes. I'm excited. And my last question to you is, Professor Barry, that what would you like to say for the young learners like me if they want to be famous like you? What should they do? I mean, I haven't really, I haven't really tried to be famous. Um, the most I can say is, I mean, um, record or pass it on camera or make someone do it for you, like my father, for example. Record or pass it on camera and um, eventually others who have that passion as well will join you, follow you, and like you as well. It will create a sort of community for everybody who has the same passion and the 
same ideas as you. And so I really, I really didn't even try to be famous uh, when, uh, until, um, I don't know, June of last year, because I mean, I was just trying to spread knowledge of math and science. I didn't want to do it while becoming, I don't know, the most famous person on YouTube. So. Yes, very nice. And lastly, I would, luck, I would like to work very closely with you and perhaps with your team to do something special so that we can be remembered for our good deeds to the generations to come and also keep Bangladeshi flag flying high. So maybe we can meet in another interview session. Yes, we can meet in another interview session. Maybe that time I can interview you and later you interview me. Just reverse the role. Great. So um, you are already truly an amazing motivational speaker. I can see you becoming a great person in your future. And you are honestly one of the best people I have ever seen. I've interviewed a lot of incredible people, uh, and a lot of incredible people, some of which are somewhat close to your age. But, um, like a person I interviewed who was, I think, 10 or one person who is 13. But you are truly one of the most incredible and remarkable and extraordinary people that I have ever interviewed. I would like to thank you for being here with me. No, I should thank you for giving me such an opportunity. I would love to work with you. Maybe another interview session in the next month. Well, we can make a plan that maybe once a month, we too can go live for the viewers only once a month. We can just fix a day. In every and month I, that we were doing really Yeah, and I would also like to thank you immensely for taking uh, so much time out of your day. I think it's currently around somewhere or around midnight um, in Bangladesh. So I would like to thank <laughs> you for taking this time. No, Professor Barry, it's not midnight yet. It's, uh, you know, the time difference between USA and Bangladesh is 11 hours. Yes, 11 oh. hours in some cases. So it is 11.07 here, 11.07 right. here, and it's morning there, right, in the USA? Mm -hmm. So yes. thank you for taking out uh, uh, this time of your day. So I would like to uh, meet you in the future. You are such a remarkable person, and I would like to say thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. Thank, thank you as well. Bye. Bye-bye.